Hello everybody, today I'm gonna tell you a little about the state of Austrian politics. Not because you care or because it affects you, but because it's kind of amazing. I made a video like that before, but I had half of the subscribers and things changed since then, so I'll go over everything again. Our story begins in 2016, there are four parties we care about in this. There is the far-right, anti-immigration, pro-free market FPÖ. They are usually portrayed as blue, so I'll use that instead of the name. The social democratic SPÖ, sort of like the British Labour Party or Bernie Sanders if you're American. Then there is the conservative ÖVP, they are sort of like the moderate ones of the American Democrats or the British Tories. Then there is the Green Party, they are like the SPÖ but they prioritize nature as well. In Austria we have a direct proportional electoral system, so if a party wins 20% of the votes it gets 20% of the seats in parliament. There is no local constituency stuff like in the UK and no electoral college like in the United States. When no party has 51% of the seats there must be a coalition. That's when two parties decide to work together to help each other achieve their goals. This usually involves a lot of compromise because no two parties agree on everything. The government is led by the chancellor, usually the head of the largest party. There is a president as well but he doesn't do much except in extreme national emergencies like when a coalition breaks the vice chancellor steps down and the chancellor is impeached all at the same time or something like that. But what are the odds of that? So now that we know how those things work we can get into what happened. At the start of our story it was 2016. It was time to elect a new president. To become president one candidate needs 51% of the vote. If no candidate gets that much in the first round there is a second election with just the two top contenders to decide who it will be. All of the parties had their candidates run. The social democrats and the conservatives both only got 11% of the vote which was a heavy blow to both of them. 19% went to Irmgard Gris, an independent candidate who previously served on the supreme court. She's who I voted for first run. Greece wasn't one of the two main candidates and later joined the NEOS, a 100% neoliberal party that tried to present itself as a new alternative to the established parties, so that's a yikes. The Green Party candidate got 21% and the far right candidate got 35%. This means that there was a second round and the Green candidate won, barely, by 0.35% of the electorate. Then the far right party went in front of the high court and wanted to repeat the election because there had been irregularities when counting the votes. They won that case and the election was done again and the green party won again this time by almost 4%. So the president is from the Green Party, remember that, it'll be important later. At the same time, parliament looked like this. There was a red and black coalition with the black chancellor. In 2017 conservatives had a bit of a leadership struggle for a few months and eventually this guy won. As you can see he's pretty young and he used that aesthetic to gain popularity. When he took over the leadership of his party he decided that he couldn't continue to work with the social democrats and ended the government. That led to a snap election in which he won a great deal of seats. The conservative party now was the biggest force in parliament at 30% of the vote. The red and blue each got 26%. That was the first election after the refugee crisis in 2015 and the far right used that to gain seats. At the time there was a leadership struggle in the Green Party which led to one of the members named Pilz running on his own. Surprisingly he managed to get enough votes to gain a seat in parliament while the Green Party didn't. The coalition that came out of that was a conservative plus far right government which didn't surprise me. Right after the election was called, long time before the first polls came out I made a YouTube video in which I predicted that this would be the result. Meine Vorhersage wird sein dass wir die ÖVP FPÖ Regierung haben werden mit Sebastian Kurz als Kanzler und AC Strache als Vizekanzler. Anyways, the new government had this guy named Kurz as Chancellor and this guy named Strache as Vice Chancellor, just as I predicted. They went about doing what their parties want to do and repealed their prohibition on a 12 hour workday. Yes, Austrian workers can now be forced to work 12 hours a day for up to 5 days in a row. They also did some other stuff like increase taxes on small businesses and decrease taxes on ebooks. That's the opposite of what both of their parties said they would do but who cares about policy anyways. Also all the minister posts were handed out to members of those two parties as is tradition. They went on governing until mid 2019 when the shit show happened. A video was sent to multiple German and Austrian news outlets in which the vice chancellor was seen talking to what he believed to be the daughter of a Russian oligarch. He said many incriminating things some of which could be considered high treason. For example, he told her to buy the major newspapers and alter the reporting to spread far right sentiment so he could become chancellor and give them government contracts. He also told them how to funnel money into his party illegally. In Austria there's a maximum amount of money a single person or corporation can donate to a party. He just told them how to get around that without the Rechnungshof, that's the government agency overseeing spending and party finances. 
being able to tell. It was quite an incriminating video and it was released shortly before the EU elections, which led many people to believe that it was a deliberate political attack. The woman in the video was an actress as well and it wasn't released directly after being recorded. But the circumstances under which it was recorded don't matter because in the end he did say all of those things. His defense was that he was drunk at the time and he wanted to impress the Russian lady. Hey baby, you wanna see me commit high treason and sell out the freedom of the country I've sworn to defend? Oh my god, that would be so hard. I love seeing blatant corruption and disregard for the constitution and all the men. Works every time. Anyways, he then resigned and left both the position of vice chancellor and his party leadership to this guy. His name is Hofer and he was the guy who lost the election for president, twice. Seeing this, Kurz, the chancellor of Austria at the time, and leader of the conservative party, smelled a chance. He decided to kick out one of the far-right ministers in his government. The other blue minister said if he did that, they would resign as well. He called their bluff and did it, followed by which they all resigned. So now half of the government parties were in chaos and half of the government was gone. At least this wasn't going to get any worse, right? Wrong. Seeing how the chancellor just booted part of his government didn't sit too well with the rest of the parties. Remember, he only had 40% of the total votes and he just acted undemocratically by removing a legally selected minister. All other parties, including the Farad party which had worked with him until then, voted to impeach him. This was his face as it happened. So now the entire government was gone, no more chancellor, no more vice chancellor, all of the conservative ministers resigned after the party leader got impeached. It is a point we had a full-blown national crisis on our hands. Luckily the constitution foresaw that this might happen and has an emergency provision in it to deal with this. This is where the president comes in. If the legal government fails for some reason, then the president gets to fill all of the position. That's chancellor, vice chancellor and all minister posts with whomever he wants to. He decided to select a bunch of non-politicians for the job. University professors, lawyers, judges and such. The positions of chancellor was given to this woman. She used to be the president of the high court and is the first woman chancellor of Austria. Yes, the first female leader of Austria was sworn in in 2019 and not even voted for by the public. I'd say that this is a sign that Austria is behind on emancipation, but then I remembered that in the United States they literally picked a pseudo-fascist rather than a woman, so I guess it's a global problem. Along with that, the constitution outlined that there should be a snap election. So in September 2019, there was another election because of this guy. If you're counting at home, this guy I knew blew up two working governments and caused snap elections both times. Anyways, the result of the election was this. As you can see, the far right party lost 10% of the electorate. The social democrats weren't capable of capitalizing on this. And most previous far right voters either voted conservative or didn't go vote at all after the face of the party, this guy resigned. The party was very much a cult of personality around him since he took over more than 10 years ago. We can also see that the Green Party made a big comeback, presumably because of the Fridays for Future movement which brought attention to the impending collapse of the global ecosystem. The big winners of the elections were the Conservatives and the Green Party. All possible coalitions include the Conservative Party and they immediately went into talks with all parties. Theoretically there is this incredibly cursed option of the Greens and the Social Democrats working with the far right but the SPÖ decided that they would never work with the FPÖ a long time ago, so that's impossible. Because of that Kurz will be Chancellor once again, despite his track record. The Green Party seemed like the most sensible partner because those two parties had the biggest gain and it was clear that that's what most people wanted. As of recording, they're in the final negotiations about some detailed policies but since the conservatives stopped the talks with all of the other parties it's not very likely that they will uh, fall out now. My prediction is that there will be a conservative plus green government which will try to use all neoliberal measures to reduce carbon emissions but won't succeed because liberal reform isn't strong enough for that which will lead to the green party losing seats in the next election. But that's future music. Right now they haven't even started the government yet, which means that the temporary government, which was selected by the president, is still in power. Looking back at it, the presidential election was really important. During the campaign, the Green candidate was officially not aligned with any party, while the far-right candidate openly said that he would be a right-wing president. In Austria, we have a history of politically neutral presidents. The Green candidate even officially left his party to be more neutral when taking office. Of course, he was the leader of the Green Party for a few years. So, it's no secret where his beliefs are, but what sets him aside from the right-wing candidate is the fact that he said that he'd be neutral, while the other one straight up said that he was gonna treat his voters and party better. Before we end, I'd like to tell you the current state of affairs around Strache, the guy who tried to sell out the free press on camera and who started all of this mess. He was officially kicked out of his party and they began to distance themselves from him. At time of recording, he hasn't been prosecuted for trying to do crimes. And just as I write this script, I read that there has been a new revolt among the far-right party. Apparently some members were unhappy with Strache being kicked out and the party distancing himself from him. 
because the party was quite a cult of personality, there are many voters who agree, and three members of the Viennese state government declared their own party. Yes, Vienna is so big that it gets its own state government. Imagine if Washington DC was a state or something like that. Those three made a party called the Allianz für Österreich, DAO for short. It means the Alliance for Austria. It's a far-right party just like the FPÖ, except they want to be friends with Strache. He isn't officially affiliated with them in any way so far. If he decides that he wants to keep being a politician, this party is his best bet. If he does end up joining them, I predict that this will split the vote of the far-right parties, resulting in both of them getting around 10% of the electorate. Ironically, because of this, I want the corrupt neo-fascists to stay in politics, because it would fundamentally hurt the far-right. So, that's it. That's the state of Austrian politics. In case you wondered what I voted for in the election, it was the new socialist party which I 100% agreed with, but which only got 0.4% of the votes, which wasn't enough to gain a seat in parliament. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you want to see what this exact same video would have looked two months ago, uh, go click on the link on screen and watch the video I made right before the last snap election. Until the next time, see ya!